we have in front of us? We have the Balvini Peat Week. Vintage 2003. Fun fact, this is the second vintage, I believe, from Balvini's. If I'm wrong, somebody correct me, but I believe it was started in 2001 as an experiment by their malt master, and we'll go a little bit at that later. But 2002 was the official first vintage of the Pete Week, and then we have the second one. 2003, I'm excited. Let's open it. Looks awesome. like every other Balvini ever. It's not a bad thing. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful absolutely. Bottle. Well, first thing, we want to talk about this container oh, outside. Please. You can talk about the A lot of containers look pretty basic. They'll just kind of have the name of the scotch, a little bit of info, maybe like a saying. This one has a calendar, and on the calendar it has like the months of the year, so the month it started, and it has the year for the batch. These are all the different vintages that they have, yeah. and this is the one we're drinking. It makes yeah. a lot of sense. The highlighted one. Oh. It's fantastic. Yeah. That's from week 34 in August 2003. Really random selection of times during the year they do this. It's, it has been quite standardized yet. Yeah. Why is Balvenie doing a peat week and telling us when they did it a big deal, right? Yeah. Why is it one week out of this whole year? Yeah, first of all, where's Balvenie from? Speyside. The one thing about most Speyside scotch is that it's unpeated, right? Yes. The Highlands, and Lowlands? Pretty much Isla, Isla is the only one that uses peat. Yeah. So for a space out scotch to have peat is kind of unique. So they take one week out of the year to do this. Well, I've always wondered, so what do they burn? Wood underneath? Huh? No, I mean the, the peat itself. No, 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 when they're not doing peat. Oh, yeah. I think, I it's, just, just wood. I think it's just wood. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. I mean, whatever flammable material they got on hand. Actually, this is what it looks like. Remember when visiting? Oh yeah. And we get to actually walk underneath? Amazing. We didn't visit this distillery. No. We were in we were Wanted in Dufftown, to. right? Yeah. We were in Dufftown. Enough about that. <clears throat> Let's pour these fantastic. Or hope to be fantastic whiskey. Ooh, nice pop. Remember how oh. hard it was to get that pop in the first episode? It smells amazing. Ooh. Almost tell my staring. I would say that's a perfect pour. I apologize. I did not waste any space. I apologize. <laughs> okay, I'll move it a wow. little. Wow, this is great. It is very full though. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's designed to not spill. <laughs> I'm still a face because no. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, pretty proud of that. Oh. What's the ABV we're working with, with this bottle? <sighs> a little higher than standard. So your standard whiskey is 40%, right? Yep. 48.3%, um, very nice. Oh man, it smells amazing. I'm excited about this. This is a beautiful bottle. A really good looking balcony. Same as before, we will first nose it, then taste it. Give our and go expert through. assessment. Yeah, add drop of water, see if that changes anything. Then we'll go through the experts assessment. Ice, cocktail. Yes. Got an interesting cocktail today. We're yeah. not even prepared for this. It's gonna be amazing. We're not prepared for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Nose it. Oh, this will be a contender for sure. It's better than other Balvenies, I think. Mm. Right off the bat, like Caribbean cask, nah. No, not Caribbean cask course. is actually quite popular. Oh, I know. It's yeah. a good, it's like the go-to Balvenie. Uh -huh. But this is gonna beat it. I'm already forecasting it. Ooh. Yeah. Well, in that case, what do you smell? First of all, there's like a, a lingering spice okay. and like a gentle smoke that I'm getting. And it's, it's, it's almost giving me like, it's staying in there and it's, it's like currents, like it just keeps rotating. Mm -hmm. I'm absolutely loving it. And I'm almost a little bit alliterative in my description where I have to say it's like frolicking flames, but very gentle, you know? It's not like flames. normal peat whiskey where you just feel heavy, kind of like, oh. This one's floral, flowery, light, but you amazing. flames. Yeah, yeah. Happy fire. <laughs> But now you mentioned the flame, it's interesting. So I, I got very sugary. There's vanilla yes. smells, it's just kind of natural. I, I just assume from the color, it's gonna be from a bourbon barrel. Um, woody smoke, so not like, cause all of the Isla whiskeys have like peat smoke, right? That, that's a very yeah. different smoke. And I mean, this one is peated, but I don't really smell peat. Yeah. That's, that's hard to describe for someone who's, who's never smelled a peat. Peat is basically just 
decayed matter that smells very foresty. Yeah. It's very foresty. Yeah. It, it doesn't smell like decay or poop. Uh, poop. Poop. <laughs> <laughs> also, ripe fruit. Totally like, agree with that, yeah. Is it like a banana? It, it's not quite a banana. Uh, like, it's. Banana is a very strong smell. So, I don't think it's more like. It's not a ripe banana, but it's, it's a ripe fruit of some kind. Also, now that you brought up frolicking flames, this smells like your family's like fireplace. Like when we just oh, sit there, yeah. there is a, a waft of that. That just, like you said, it, it comes to a little bit. I think it's just because I saturate my nose, so I step back, then breathe a little bit more, and then we come back and like waft another like light wood fire, camp, or fireplace yeah. fire over. It's nice. Okay. Oh man, you're all right. Oh. Beats Caribbean cast by a mile. It's actually quite strong on the alcohol though. Forty-eight percent. Like it just punched me in the face. Okay. Yeah. Well, you might have just consumed it too quickly. Mm. So here's like a, a small trick. Um, I'm glad you mentioned that. So my first sip. It's, it's so so small like if I could like measure it, it's like just a couple of drops and I just coat my entire tongue in as much of my mouth as possible with that tiny amount and just breathe a little bit so it kind of sets the baseline and then your next sip you don't get killed mm. especially for anything like higher proof than, than 40% because yeah. the, the previous ones we're used to just or the last couple of uh, months it's just 40%, so that's 8% less alcohol. And you can really taste this difference in percentage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think after it goes above 43, 44%, you really notice a difference in that like alcoholic punch. After you. Okay, so I got baking spices. Yeah, so I'm not sure which one. It's not quite cinnamon, but it is very similar to that. Uh, change it from sugary to honey mm. right because it's, it's sort of a more mellow sweetness with a this kind of goes in the other thing flowers right oh so funny thing so I just came back from Peru I actually ate a lot of edible flowers while down there no way so now I have an assessment of what flowers would taste like that's awesome I have some flowers over there do you want to try eating one no anyway so vanilla says this Barbecue smoke, uh, kind of with, without the meat. Does that make sense? It's like the barbecue smoke again. I think I know. Yeah. Fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before you throw any actual barbecue on the Barbie. Yeah. Um, on the Barbie. On the Barbie. <laughs> slap the slap the Barbie. <laughs> Anyways, and citrus zest. Yeah. Citrus zest. Okay. All that's, right. That's all I got. I'm following it. So, you you kind of hit the nail on the head when you were like. Don't judge it by the nose, because the taste is gonna, it might throw you off a little bit. And then I did have a little bit of like discrepancy between my expectation and what actually, the reaction in my mouth. So I immediately got a sense of like a tangy, bitter <clears throat> taste. It was very strong. It might've been because I just shocked myself too much in the beginning, because I was too <laughs> excited. So micro sips in the, in the beginning. I like that, that's really good advice, because I was way too excited to go all in. Oh yeah. Um, I, I do appreciate, the hint of peat, like it's definitely there. Like you don't have to th work really hard or think really hard about is it peaty, but mm -hmm. it's not overpowering. Like it's yeah. like, it's beautifully complex where it's like, you know, I taste it and I'm thinking about it, but I don't have to like, on either, it's like balanced really nicely. Mm -hmm. So I, I appreciate that. And I'm getting a little burnt vanilla. Like again, the, the burntness is there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And That's I think cool. I will appreciate this with a drop of water though. Yeah. So, all right, cool. Yeah. Let's, let's try that drop of water, and then we will go to the experts after that. It's interesting you bring up the peat. I was just looking here. They have a difference between Isla and Highland peat. Whoa, that's amazing. See? What is it? Phenols, non-phenols, and you're the, you're the biologist. What is that middle one? <laughs> <laughs> I'm also the guy that can't pronounce anything. <laughs> we'll get back to that in a second. Again. Our differences in adding water. Swirl versus bloom. <laughs> Always. Yeah. 
Mm. Oh. Just so this, much better. This is the first whiskey we've had where there's such a huge change. It's actually drinkable now, in my opinion. Before I was mm -hmm. like a little overwhelmed by the... the I will say, I'm, I'm never, I never seek out cast strength, full strength whiskeys. Yeah, ever. but you know, they say like direct from the cask is the best. Sure, and we've had that. Yes. And and that's what cash strength is going for, right? Like it's right. not direct from the cash, right. of course. But I, I don't think every whiskey would be improved by serving at cash strength. Yeah. Like the ones we've had at Brooklady, just, I mean, those are just fantastic. Bliss. The Lafroig ones, I literally only liked the cast that I selected mm -hmm. of the three. We have like three, yeah. yeah. I didn't like the one you selected. To each his own. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. like that's the point. Yeah, that's why yeah, that's the point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I do believe that John and I did get the like more sherry cask one. I think and you and Carl picked the bourbon cask, Lafroigs. Mm. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Okay. Oh yeah, let's Color. see. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Which person's? Oh, yours is lighter. Yeah. All right. Let's see this. Mm. Yours is a bit stronger. Yours is where I was at, actually. I think we have oh, the same okay. amount of water. And you want it a little bit more? I think so. It separates out the flavors a bit more clearly. Maybe for the long run, I wouldn't add that much water, but... Yeah, I think this one's very easy to, like... Like, you want to coat your tongue and mm -hmm. experience everything, but because of the very strong alcoholic punch... Mm -hmm. The burn. After two sips, if they're too, for, like, too closely spaced... I'm not getting anything from the second sip. Like it's it's too strong, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so definitely diluting it is helping in that regard. I do love um, it. I get the peat a little bit more because like the it separates out from the smoke and the spices a little bit more or that bitter citrus zest or whatever. Yeah, the, the whole burnt vanilla note, mm -hmm. I completely erased that with water. Like I'm not getting that at all. So I think that was an artifact. Mm. Yeah, it's actually just pleasant. Let's get this on ice, and then we will uh, yes. bring out the expert assessment. Mm, perfect. Cheers. We're done with these glasses. Moving out of the way. And time for ice. Wallen's least favorite. Yeah, this is usually terrible. Ring. All right. Will you okay. do the honors? Cool. That one pops so fantastically. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. The color is off. It's like emulsifying because even the whiskey is confused. Just against it. Look at it. That does not look drinkable. Yeah, but this has actually diluted it. Well, at this very moment, it's diluted it just the right amount. I cannot taste anything. I can taste some. It does knock out a, a few of the flavors. Not really getting any of that citrus anymore. Smoke is very muted, half of the spice level. This tastes like Johnny Red with ice. That's what I'm getting from it right now. Mm. It's like a little bit of a cut, you know, like, nah, it's whiskey. Well, I know people. No who, complexity. I know people who put like Johnny Blue on ice. <laughs> Paulman is judging so no. hard. He's like, you're dead to me if you do this. As always, Tina has taken the liberty of oh, hell writing yeah. up some nose and tastings from the. Expert for nosing toasted oak with a hint of heather. Hmm. I don't know what that is. That's a girl's name. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Stroop waffle. Yeah, that's like my first go to whenever I taste like this. Yeah, yeah. this is Stroop waffle. Like, come on, guys. Like, you use something more relatable. <laughs> like, if they said leather. That's okay. <laughs> this is why we're here. Yeah. We'll let you know what really it tastes like. <laughs> yeah. Stroop waffle, <laughs> a layman's version of it. Yeah, I actually sort of know what stroop waffle tastes like because uh, we had a few Dutch people in, in the lab, or at least so it's like a waffle. University. No, so it's more like a dessert. It's like mm. it's really thin waffle, similar to like an ice cream cone. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. W waffle. Yeah, yeah, waffle cone texture. And then they smear like some sort of like sweet honey or glaze or something in between two of them and you eat it. Oh, I definitely know what you're talking about. Yeah. It I is was delicious. I you for just the shrimp waffle part, uh, but now with the sandwich, I've never tried this. 
Okay. But okay, it is cool. delicious. It's sweet. It's like a little nutty. Um, but yeah, like, but for most of the world, like, how many people have tried Stroop Waffle? Like, nobody in Asia is going to look at this and be like, yeah, Stroop Waffle. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Coffee. You know what? I love coffee. I didn't get that at all. Flamed orange peel. Nice. Flickering flames. Yeah. All right. And I got the citrus bar. Dry cedar. Who the hell's eaten? Okay. Well, this is smell. All right. So dry cedar. That makes <laughs> sense. I was like, who the hell ate some cedar? Yeah. I, I guess you can. You grill stuff on a cedar plank. Or you know how they put it in like uh, smoked cocktails? Uh, so like you definitely get the smoked turkey. Some kind of cedar. Like, you can get wood infusion. Hit me with a taste and finish. Taste and finish. You ready for this? Oh, right. the first one's really good. I can't believe anything. Butterscotch. I absolutely agree with that one. Yeah. Uh, roasted apricot. Okay. Light touch of floral malt. Yeah. Earthy peak lingers alongside runny honey notes. Honey. Yeah. You got it. Cool. Yeah, certain ones are different. I can't wait. We're getting better at this. You know, one day we may be in agreement with yeah. the experts. And then yeah. we become the experts. We're going to rewrite <laughs> all the notes. Let's make a cocktail. Ooh, we got a yes. special cocktail. We're going to see how this turns out. I'm excited. Um, <clears throat> and then we will talk about this, bo this bottle, how it's made, some of the history. Uh, so we can talk about different types of peat, which I would love to know about. Yeah, that's amazing. You're gonna love my notes then. Holy All right. Shit, this... So what do we got? Our Thanksgiving cocktail. Both kind of came out with this. My initial assessment was just to use espresso. And you yeah. were like, just do hot chocolate. And then we got mixed up along the way and brought both. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're gonna use both. Best of both worlds. This looks fantastic. Hmm. I don't love it. I don't love it either. Yeah, we tried. Uh, <laughs> you have cinnamon? Good thing we did not call it a WGF. <laughs> Hot chocolate. No, no cinnamon. Okay. We have a backup cocktail. Oh. After. <laughs> uh. You know what? It's trying to be a hot chocolate. But the peat doesn't work. Oh. I think it's just that combination of flavors it doesn't lend well. Mmm. Yeah. Why do we choose Balvini to begin with? Because of the kind of interesting peat week concept. Yeah. Like that was just very, it, that's not something that happens in Space Side, so I thought that was yeah. cool. Yeah. So you chose it for that side of it, and I had suggested it mainly because it's still one of the few family-owned distillery or whiskey companies still in Scotland. William Granson's son, to this day, it's still like a family-owned company. And I mean, they, they own a lot of distilleries. Not, well, not a lot, but quite a few. And by uh, volume production, they do produce 7% of the scotch that comes out of Scotland. Wow. That makes them the third biggest producer of scotch whiskey. They own Glenfiddich. They also own Belvini, Gervan, Kinivy, Alsa Bay, and Tullamore. Kinkini? Oh, Tullamore, yes. Yeah, bro. I haven't tried it, I, don't, I think. Yeah. But I've definitely heard of that one. William Grant started by blending whiskeys. Okay. Right? Like, yeah. that, that's a whole thing. I mean, main distilleries, even to this day, still do Yeah, that. yeah. Yeah. They were founded in Duff, Dufftown, like we said, where we were before. Yeah. Uh, founded by William Grant, and he did it by... He bought a field near Balvini Castle, constructed this mansion, or remodified this mansion manor thing into the Balvini distillery. So first stone was set in 1886, and then I think in 1892, began the construction. 1893 is the first distillation that nice. happened at the distillery. Okay. So that's when they first producing Balvini. I'm gonna fact check you. Does it say on there? It always says it on every bottle, right? They're okay. like, 1892, bam. Nice, you're right. It. Here's one thing we should mention. How this bottle came into creation, right? Like, how did they come up with this peated uh, scotch in the Speyside region? And it's not 
a little bit of peat either. It's 30 parts per million, which is wow. kind of is considered high peat yeah. content. But like they, they say, it's highland peat. Right? Yeah. So there's there's a huge difference. And according to Feldini's uh, site and possibly like in all this text, there's a lot of text on this. This can. is beautiful, yeah. Highland peat is more earthy. There's more wood smoke compared to Isla, which is more medicinal iodine salt, which absolutely lovely. So yeah, like, I mean, comparing this to like an Ardbeg or, or a Lafroig, you can clearly, if you want to, that difference in peat. Yeah, if you want to summarize that, and I just cheated off the bottle, the medicinal one that the Isla peat gives you is the phenol, and the earthy and more sweet mm -hmm. uh, or smoky one is the non-phenolic. And so the proportion of those, mm. if we don't worry about this middle one, the glycol, yeah. that's what's giving you that difference. Yeah. That's fantastic. In 2001, right? Like I, I mentioned this, I think right before we started the, the show. Um, 2001 <laughs> is when their, their malt master, his name was oh. David C. Stewart. What's up, David? Yeah, David, fantastic job, mate. Came up with this idea to experiment with peated smoke into the, the whiskey. So they took some barley and they dry roasted it over peat instead of their usual wood smoke. Or in some places they use like a, an electrical heat source. So really? I, I think so. Wow. That's where you don't get any smoke flavor at all. That's crazy, I hate that. Well, I mean, that's, I, it, there's a reason for everything. 2001, they experimented with this. <laughs> um, so it was between him and the manager at the time, his name was, the, the manager of the distillery was named Ian Miller, and he, and the two of them together experimented with this peat smoke. They were like, hey, this is fantastic. So in 2002, they made the first batch. So 2002 vintage was the very first batch of this uh, peated smoke. So one, one week out of every year, they do an enti entire week. Everything is peat dried barley or peat roasted barley and uh, that's where the week come from peat week peat week yeah I love that such a cool concept nice concept the whiskey but, was you know, great they wise up they just follow the either route and you know just do it year round you know what else though I really like about uh, we should put up this calendar uh, for everyone to see but yeah. it's okay. not the same time of year for different batches, so know. you know it's gonna be different because the, the climate's gonna be different from August to November to February to what? Like May, July? Like they've sampled the whole year over the yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. So like so it's gonna like, be different every time. The air is gonna be different. Yeah, so look, look at oh. this. I think they've hit every single month. Yeah. Like, hold on, let me, let me see. It looks like it, for sure. Except January. I mean, what do they got against January? It might be freaking cold. <laughs> January and September, they haven't done. Wow, that's messed up. That's both of our birthday months. <laughs> Birth months. For real. Wow. I'm going to have to have a word with this distiller. Hey, Balvini. You did December twice. Merry Christmas, I guess, but come on. Let's make another cocktail, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about... Ooh, I'm actually really excited about this, because it's going to be... Well, all these are Thanksgiving cocktails, but this yeah. one more so, because what do people have during Thanksgiving dinners? Hold that thought, we'll let you know in a second. Ooh. We're back with a second cocktail. Welcome. So we're gonna try something new. Let's do it. All right. Yeah, for some reason. You like this? I don't hate it. Yeah. I don't think it enhanced it. Don't get me wrong. Okay. It's not better. Like the eggnog was better. Yeah. Before? Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know. I would probably not recommend peated whiskey and any kind of sweet cocktail. Truth. Like, I don't think you even make, like, old fashions with peated. Like, you just... I can't think of a peated whiskey cocktail. All right. Cheers. <sighs> nope. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mind this. <coughs> nope. Mm, I'm done. It gives me the taste of like a, a white Russian. You know, it's very similar. It has that consistency. You know who loves white Russians? Europe. Europe. <laughs> mm. 
Alright, you know what? I both our cocktails school. today were, were absolutely terrible for me. I don't enjoy it. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't I like, recommend it. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. recommend it. But, uh, I didn't hate it. We'll, we'll put up the recipe somewhere. <laughs> Hot chocolate and peated whiskey, don't do it. Yeah, throw an espresso in it, still don't do it. <laughs> Put it in eggnog, don't do it. It was a waste of espresso, like I would rather just have all those separate. Okay, apparently it's good eggnog. Oh yeah, the Evan Williams eggnog is fantastic. Whiskey of the month, Belvini, Pete Week, 14th year. So until next time, cheers to you guys, and Nostrave! Mm. It's so much better water, that was crazy. Yeah. I really like this one with water. Like, really like it. It's like really complex, yeah. Because of our love of Scotland, we decided to use one of their kind of more common animals that you see everywhere in the Scottish countryside, a sheep. Yeah. Except I couldn't find a, a satisfying sheep sound. So every time you ble heard a bleep out, that was me going, meh. <laughs> <laughs> Meh. <laughs> well, uh, I again. can't do it. Meh. We can do this for a while. Meh. 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 He's like a. He's like a sick, wounded cat. <laughs>